So based off of my research and my belly too, I am 120% sure that if you try to just eat one of these chips, just one, you will find yourself eating multiple over and over and over. And then to top it off, I am also 120% sure that once you dip one of those chips into this, <laughs> you, you in for a ride after that. What? Somebody that is also 120% sure about some things, that would be Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson because he said he is 120% sure that he will be suiting up this Sunday night in all black against the Cleveland Browns. And that's going to be a very, very tough game. And, and this was a uh, presser that at some moments it got pretty tough. I know my guy, Coach, he just made a short on and he said that, that a lot of these reporters, they don't ask Lamar Jackson football questions. They get so just fixated on asking them COVID this, COVID that, sickness this, sickness that. But they failed to ask him a lot of football questions. But anyway, there was a presser today that featured one John Harbaugh, featured one uh, Nick Boyle, featured one Chuck Clark, even though he was in and out. It seemed like, oh, they asked Chuck Clark, what's your name? Oh, I'm Chuck Clark. Okay, bye. But that, his part was literally in and out. But anyway, Lamar Jackson was also a part of this presser. And we'll start with his part. He said that he's good. He's actually feeling great this time. Uh, he said that he's not having any more relapses. Um, he, he said that he has no clue what happened between Friday and Saturday. Because we know that he missed the first couple of practices in the week. Then he practiced at the end. Then all of a sudden, oh, oh Lamar's sick. Oh, Lamar's balled up on the plane. Oh, Lamar ain't feeling good. And it was like, uh-oh, uh, what's going on with Lamar? And apparently he wasn't good enough to go. Uh, he said he was just fatigued and just out of it. Um, maybe that weather up there. Because you know the weather up there in Maryland, it ain't the same as it is down here in Florida. Florida got the best weather. Y'all already know what time it is. But anyway... Um, he's, he's, I guess he still got to get used to it. Uh, he said when Huntley, uh, made that happen on the last drive, he said he didn't even feel like he was sick anymore. He said he felt like, oh, that drive just cured everything. Cause he just said he was jumping and yelling and screaming and all that. And that's that support, man. That's that support. It ain't nothing like that support. Um, uh, he said Tyler's always been the same guy, the leader, competitive person, uh, dating back to their days in high school and whatnot. Uh, he said it was rough not being out there with the team and all that, especially after that Miami game. You know, that Miami game was rough. And then when you when you can't even have a bounce back game from the Miami game and you got to watch it on the sideline, it's like, oh, man, that got to be super tough for real. Um, they asked him what stuck out the most uh, to him with the Browns game from last year. He said it was the cramps. <laughs> and then he also said that it was the uh, just the back and forth. Had the teams, they kept scoring back and forth uh, with each other. But if y'all recall, remember, the Ravens actually, they kept scoring, and they had stopped the Browns a couple times. And then it wasn't until Lamar went out that the Browns came back in. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, this should be, this is going to be a really tough game. Ooh, so I know it's going to be stressful too. Uh, he said that uh, with Trace McSorley, he said he loves him, and Trace is really smart, he's humble. Uh, and that they're going to miss him a lot. And we've seen those same, uh, those same uh, sentiments with a lot of the players on the team with how they feel about uh, Trace McSorley. Now, um, when he was asked about the Browns' defense, what sticks out the most to him? He said Miles Garrett and Jadavian Clowney. Oh, my goodness, our offensive line. <sighs> our offensive line is, they got to be on it on Sunday night. Nick Boyle, please, uh, just... Oh, boy, this is going to be a very, very tough, tough game with so many tough matchups. Um, anyway, I don't even really want to think about it right now. Uh, but he said that Denzel Ward, he's been healthy this year, and he's been playing pretty good. Um, and then somebody asked him uh, another question about the sickness, and he said, he said he's tired of talking about the sickness. He joked about it, but you could tell that there was some seriousness behind that joke. Uh, and then he did say that he is 120% confident that he will be playing against those Browns. And it's funny that I put in my notes, these questions, man, shaking my head. That's, that's all I could do for some of them. That's all I could do. And it was just like, 
what are y'all asking, man? It, it it can be so frustrating sometimes watching some of these presses, and it's like, really, like this 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 is the question that you want, but it, it's all good, man. Um, with Harbaugh, um, Harbaugh he spoke first, uh, and he said that they're preparing for both Browns quarterbacks, both Baker Mayfield and Case Keenum. You already know, um, you know Baker Mayfield is gonna play though, but. Anyway, uh, he said that Lamar he w is going to be practicing today. By the time you see this video, Lamar will probably will have practiced already. Um, he said with Chris Westry, uh, they and, and the, the whole play and every, all the attention that it's been getting, he said they just move on to the next opportunity. That's it. They move on, and they don't really want to dwell on it or whatnot. Um, he talked about Sammy Watkins, how clutch he's been, of course, with the 4th and 19 back against the Lions, and then with the... Uh, with the uh, the play, the Tyler Huntley, the Sammy Watkins play in the fourth quarter of the Bears game. I guess Sammy just loves showing up against the NFC North. We're going to definitely need it against them Packers. Oh, boy. This, this, the season just gets so much tougher from here. Anyway, um, he talked about the poor snaps recently. Uh, and that has been something that is, is quite concerning. Because uh, you don't want it to be like last. See, because it's one thing. If you have bad snaps, but you have an offensive line that's really good, so you, you snap the ball poorly, offensive line, they can still protect, but we have a bad offensive line. So just like last year, we have a bad offensive line, so if the ball is snapped poorly, that just puts your quarterback in that much more danger. And we all remember the way that the Bills game went, right? Well, maybe Lamar doesn't because he had a concussion. And he received that concussion from snaps being all over the place, and then one snap that just went woo way over his head. And then he got whacked. Took him out the game. So, as bad as the offensive line is, bad snaps will make that offensive line that much worse. So, gotta be careful with it. Anyway, um, he said that Bozeman has been snapping the ball well all year. Uh, and he should really be chasing perfection. But he said there are a lot of snaps to go. And, yeah, you're right about that one. Um, and he was asked about the Ravens being number two and stopping the run and how it's going to be cold on Sunday night. Uh, he talked about how the Browns' offensive line is good, and they are. They are very good. And they just gave out a bunch of their guys' contract extensions and whatnot. And they just recently activated um, Kareem Hunt. So Kareem Hunt should be playing in the game. Nick Chubb should be there, too. So, yeah. <laughs> it is going to be a game Oh, it's going to be a game um, Now this part Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready We always say that, but Kenji Kenji Bahar, he uh, gave us another reminder of that um, He was actually He had been working at his uncle's warehouse In South Carolina He was working at his uncle's warehouse And then he got the call from the Ravens That, hey, we want to bring you back so, wow. Wow. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. He could have been like, oh, man, I'm not in shape. Oh, man, I ain't been working out in forever. But apparently, he, I mean, he would have has, has to be. Has to be in some good shape. Um, so, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. So, shout out to Kenji for staying ready. And I would expect him to, because they don't have any other quarterbacks, I'd expect him to remain on the roster for the remainder of the year. Because Trace McSorley is gone, gone. He ain't like gone, well, oh, maybe he come back. No, he's gone. He's on the active roster. So I, I appreciated that. Nick Boyle, he was after John Harbaugh. And Nick Boyle, uh, he just like, you can see like he, he's a giant. Like John Harbaugh, when John Harbaugh came on there, he was down here. But when Nick Boyle came on there, the camera was like right here. So they had to move it up uh, so they could actually see him. Um, but he said that he has a lot more respect for people who go through serious injuries. Uh, he said he really missed everything, like as far as being out there and the practices and everything. Uh, and he said after his surgery, he said he was miserable. But his fan was there, so that helped. And he said the Ravens were really good through the process, too. Now, I mean, of course they are, because they, they paying you all that money. And they know how bad their offensive line is. So Nick Boyle was extremist. Extremist. Whew. Anyway, um, he said when you have an injury, uh, you ask yourself if you're going to be the same player that you were before. And it's, it's tough enough if you hear all of that, like from media and whatnot. You hear all of that from 
analysts and experts and this station and that news station and this newspaper and this reporter and th- you, you hear all that from them but it's a question that players think about too and they've got to because you don't want to be a shell of what you once were uh he said that the injury that he suffered where well, he had two surgeries on he said it was his hamstring his meniscus his mcl his pcl and he said there was a fracture so we we got bionic boil now that's what i'm gonna start calling him hashtag bionic boil if you had this part of the video put it in the comment section hashtag bionic boil and if you got an iphone you should put that little that that little robot arm that little robot arm emoji that we got in there i don't know if android people got it but no offense i still love y'all anyway um he said when you whenever you're coming back from injury you're always gonna have doubts and yeah that that's true that's the tough part about injuries man with these players that's that's there's something serious um and then last but certainly not least was chuck clark and it's, it's like with chuck clark i feel like they be trying chuck clark because they'll have these presses they'll, they'll have these long interviews with all these people um, but it seems like they just like, all right, Chuck, we'll, just, we'll, we'll have like two, three questions for you. Then go on, go off. Because like literally he was up there for like two seconds and then he was gone. Uh, but anyway, um, they asked if the defense is too complicated and is that why there are so many breakdowns? Now, you know, I, I love the question and I appreciate the question. But you know, Chuck ain't throwing nobody under the bus. If that is the case. And even if, even if, it, uh, even if he didn't mind that would make him look bad too because chuck is known as this smart player he's known as this smart guy and he said yeah it's, it's too complicated that's why we ain't getting mm, no nah, ain't nobody gonna come out and say that i appreciated the question though but he said that uh he doesn't think the coaches give them more than they can handle so basically no it's not too complicated that's what he was saying uh he said that with brandon stevens he's getting better every day uh, and with that experience that he'll be uh getting more and more settled in and that's true. I mean, that's something that when, whenever I am looking at Brandon Stevens, and yeah, he misses some plays. He mess up, messes up sometimes. Um, but whenever I look at him, I got to remember, like, hey, this is a rookie. And this is a rookie that a lot more responsibility is being thrown on him than what the expectation was. Because the expectation was that it was going to be Deshaun Elliott. So with Deshaun Elliott going out due to injury, Brandon Stevens was thrown in. And even though early on they have been giving him a lot of responsibility because they had him playing out there a lot before the injury, before Deshaun Elliott's injury, still, he wasn't expected to have this role this soon. Um, so it's, it's trial by fire. Now, last night when I was watching um, all 22 NFL cuts, I know all y'all know who that is. This dude has just burst onto the scene and he is taking over. So shout out to my guy, man. Um, love his videos, love his streams. They always got like the best the most chill vibe in there uh, but it's an educational informal vibe too he has fun breaking down plays and whatnot showing and going over film uh but he, he does it in such a fun way the streams are always jumping always a lot of fun in there but anyway on the famous fourth and 11 play the whole cover zero play that has been getting talked about over and over and over and over and over again and it's going to be talked about some more too um there was uh i think it was tony romo who said that uh and I think Harbaugh said, I think Harbaugh said it too. But anyway, it was talked about how Brandon Stevens on that play, he sort of hesitated to blitz. And he was late to blitz. And if he would have blitzed, then he would have had a free, free lane to the quarterback. But what all 22 NFL cuts, what he pointed out is that with Brandon Stevens, he had an assignment on that play. And I, I didn't notice. I, all I had heard was, oh, yeah, Brandon Stevens was late. He was late. And if he would have went, he would have been able to get to the quarterback untouched pretty much. But what he pointed out was that Brandon Stevens actually had an assignment that if the running back was to come out of the back, this, see, this is why I love these film guys, because I love when they show you stuff that you wouldn't see. Because y'all know I'm not a film guy at all, but I, I love when they show you that stuff that, that, that you may not know about or you wouldn't see or you didn't realize. And I was all three of the, of, of, of the above. Um, but he said Brandon Stevens' assignment was the running back. So if the running back was to go out for a pass, Brandon Stevens had to stick with the running back. But... Once Brandon Stevens realized, all right, the running back is staying back. He, he's, he's staying in in pass protection. All right, now I, I can blitz. So that's why Brandon Stevens hesitated. Because if he would have just went, if he would have just blitzed, then the running back went out, oh, <laughs> free man. Free man. He's wide open. 
So I, I really appreciated that um, a whole lot. Uh, oh, there we go. This is a live update uh, at 1.43 p.m. You will see this hours later. Uh, but it says that Lamar Jackson, Brandon Williams, and Hollywood all practicing for the Ravens. That's beautiful. Love it. Love it. Anyway, uh, back to the presser. Um, he said that uh, on Sunday night against the Browns, it'll be a tough physical game. And he said that they are trying to win the division. And this is where it starts, division games. You already got whooped by the Bengals. So bad. You got embarrassed at, at the crib, too. Um, so you play, you got five more division games, and you got three in a row. Because, is it four in a row? I know it's three in a row for sure, because you got Browns, Steelers, Browns. Oh, so a, what a tough schedule. Let, let me just see real quick who they play after they play the Browns the second turn. One second, y'all. Because I, I, I told y'all, I don't remember, really usually remember the Ravens' schedule a, a, a week ahead. Okay. So they play the Browns. They play three division games in a row. Then they get a break against the Packers. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and then after that, you go back to the Bengals. And then after that, uh, you get oh you get a division break because you play the Rams. Oh, boy. And then you play the Steelers to close it out. Oh, my goodness. This playoffs done already started for the Ravens. They done already started. They, they in the playoffs now. They, they, these are playoff games right here. So I don't want to hear nothing else. This ain't Regular season is done. This is playoffs. So, anyway, um, he was asked how uh, he handles the big plays uh, when, when they give up a big play, when it's a breakdown or whatnot. Uh, he said it comes back to us in the meetings, uh, just really fixing what they can to do better. Um, and he said in the games, they just have to move on so they can make sure that those big plays don't happen multiple times uh, throughout games. Now, they haven't been doing the best job of doing that, but, hey, <sighs> That's what the whole season is for, um, for you to make adjustments. So oh, that word has been a big word. Of the, that's the word of the week. Word of the week, adjustments. Shout out to my guy, uh, Sutton Death from Purple Rain Podcast. I love following him on Instagram because he usually posts the, the word of the day. But and uh, in this case, we got to talk about the word of the week. And again, it is adjustments. We talk about adjustments when the Ravens win. We talk about adjustments when the Ravens lose uh, because Ravens have to get better at adjustments. So with that being said, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. We're glad Lamar is back officially. We're glad Hollywood is back officially. Glad Brandon Williams is back officially because they, they did it without him on, on Sunday against the Bears, but... Again, the competition officially goes way up from this point moving forward. And you do not play any bad teams at all anymore. You don't have any bad teams left on your record. So scraping by barely by doing this and doing that, and just, you got to bring it that much more. You got to bring it that much more. You got to step up your game that much harder because everything is tougher moving forward. We out.